Hey my guys, I hope you're doing well. Okay, so this is going to be a tutorial for your idle animation assignment, but it can also be used to finish your class exercise. So what I'd like you to do is watch the tutorial, finish your class exercise, submit that to the Purple Monk idle animation exercise, and then uh, redo this for your idle animation, which will then go towards your end of term mark. All right, so if we take a look at the idle animation progress, You'll be using a different file for this one. You must use this character. He's orange instead of purple, much like his um, counterpart in the reference footage that we have. So you need to download him, and this is just to make sure that I can help tell the difference between the two assignments and I don't get them confused and you don't get them confused. All right, so download this file. Once you do, we'll import it into After Effects. So what we're gonna do is, and so after effects we'll create a new composition it's going to be 10 seconds long so it can read 0 double zero, 10 double zero. we can say ok and what we can then do is import our file now we can go about doing that by doing file import file otherwise control or command i alternatively you could just double click in the project panel okay now the file that you're using is the orange monk file for the um, idle animation end of term assignment we remember that we are going to import it as a composition retain layer sizes creating a composition must be turned on and we can then say open okay we know it's worked when we come into our project panel here in after effects and we then have the orange monk uh, project um, composition over here double clicking on that will open up our character he's exactly the same as uh, the purple character just a couple of maybe uh, one or two different labeled files like background or something like that I think layer 2 doesn't actually have anything on it so in this file you can delete layer 2 and then we've got the same layers all right so what we're now going to do is color label our layers. We're then going to uh, place the anchor points in the correct position, parent everything correctly, and then we can start animating. So the first part, most important part, is the rigging. We're gonna start off by selecting layers one down to seven. If we take a look at our character, we can see there that this is the front arm closest to us. So that is all grouped together. They all refer to the same limb and I'm going to label this with blue for today. All right, the eyes are a layer unto themselves, so I'm just gonna label them red, they don't refer to anything else. Label nine, oh sorry, layer nine, 10, and 11, rope, rope, and belt, that all refers to the white belt around his waist, so I'm just going to label that purple. The torso and the legs can refer to one another, and we can then just label this as fuchsia maybe back arm so that's layer 14 down to layer 18 uh, back forearm back upper arm pinky middle and thumb i'll just label that in cyan the bell and the bell thingy we can label that in aqua that's a little bit too close to cyan let's just go then with orange and then the index and hand layer 21 and 22 also refers to the back arm so that will be the same color cyan there my background layer here i'm going to lock because i don't want to accidentally interact with it at any given point and i'm going to make it shy remember i showed you how to do this in class we click on this little mushroom looking button next to the name of the layer here and then we activate it by turning that little mushroom button blue up here at the top of the timeline all right we'll do this to a couple of other layers as well a bit later so you'll have a chance to practice but for now we've color coded and we're good to go what we're going to do now is we're going to start placing our anchor points all in the correct position so i'm going to select my layers one to seven and i could work on top of my character like this but i'm clumsy i risk the chance of moving my torso by accident or deselecting what i'm working on it can be a bit frustrating so rather, I'm going to select layers one down to seven, and I'm going to solo those layers. I solo them by clicking on the empty square here underneath this big white dot in the timeline. And what that does is it only shows the layers that have got a solo icon. So you can add more solo layers to it. You can remove and re-add solo layers. It's a very useful little function. 
All right, so layer one, front upper arm, we're going to move the anchor point to where the shoulder would be. And uh, we do that by hitting Y to grab our pan behind tool. And then we can hit W to select our rotation tool and we can rotate test to make sure that we're happy with that. When it comes to placing anchor points on characters, just think about how your body moves. Where would you place an anchor point if you had to mimic the, the fashion that your body was to, to rotate or bend in? All right, so anchor point into the elbow for the front forearm. The hand, we would obviously want our anchor point to be where it came into contact with the wrist, All right? Um, and then the fingers, we would want the anchor points to be where that digit essentially came to contact with the hand. All right. And uh, it's important that we do these rotation tests, and I'm constantly anal about these rotation tests, because they really do help you just prevent yourself from being caught out. If you're tired, frustrated, end of a long day, such as today, um, it's easy to miss or mistake a layer as small as a finger or perhaps an even smaller item. Finding that out hours into an animation is not fun at all. All right, so we have now placed all of our anchor points in the correct position for these layers here. I'm now going to leave the eye layer where it is. We don't need to move the anchor point for that. Um, layers 9 and 10, I'll solo these, and we are going to move the anchor points. So for the belt, I'm going to move that to essentially, if I unsolo this quickly, where the belly button for this character is going to be. And uh, this is essentially just going to mimic where his pelvis would be. So when he rotates, he's rotating at the correct point in his waist, or at least that's the illusion that we're creating, right? Uh, the rope strings will move the anchor points to the top of the ropes because that is where they are cinched to the waist. And it makes sense that they would then sway from that point of contact. All right. Coming into the torso, we are going to be animating the torso. So let's move the anchor point exactly to where we had the belt uh, anchor point to. So right there in between the two ropes. Again, essentially where the character's waist would be. All right. The legs will do the same thing. We won't be animating the legs, but it's always good to do the prep work just in case something comes along and it's already been rigged and set up properly. Back forearm, all of these layers down here, 14 to 22. Let's solo those so we can have an easier time looking at them. And uh, layer 14, that's our back forearm. We're going to move our anchor point to where the elbow would be. Rotation, check that. Moving on to layer 15 move the anchor point to the shoulder, rotation check. Fingers, again, same thing. We're going to be moving the anchor points to where they would come into contact with the hand and we'll rotate to make sure that when they move, they're not clipping or cutting anything off that we might not be uh, able to see up front. Okay. The bell, that's layer 19, will move the anchor point for that to its point of contact with the fingertips. All right, makes sense that that's where it would rotate from. And the bell thingy, the clanger, will move the anchor point to its top over here so that it can rotate like so. Okay, then it's just the back index finger and the back hand, so the index finger moves nicely and then the hand rotates like so. Lego. So that is now all of the anchor points placed in the correct position. It is now time to parent everything correctly. And we're going to do so from the top, work our way down and we'll rotate, rotate test our way. Okay, so the front upper arm we can see would be attached to the torso. So layer one is parented to layer 12. We remember that in order to parent, we simply need to click and hold on this little snail icon for the layer. It's known as the pick whip tool. We'll drag and drop it on top of the layer that we want to parent that layer to. So I want to parent layer one to layer 12, drag and drop. Layer one is now parented to layer 12. We can see in this drop down over here. 
Layer two, the forearm is going to be parented to the front upper arm, so layer two parented to layer one. We'll rotation check upper arm, bottom arm moves with it. We can test the torso, the top arm moves with it. Cool. Then we need the hand, so that's layer three, it will be parented to layer two. We can rotation check the um, arm, bottom arm here, and we can see that the hand moves with it. Layer four down to layer seven, that's the thumb, index, middle, and pinky. Those will all be parented to layer three, the hand. So when I rotation check the hand, fingers move with it. Cool. We have the eyes next, that's layer eight, that'll be parented to layer 12. So the eyes will be parented to the torso. Rope two and rope, that's layers nine and 10, will be parented to the belt, which is layer 11. Layer 11 will then be parented to layer 12, which is the torso. And we'll rotation check the torso so far and see that the arm and the belt along with the ropes are moving correctly. All right, the legs and the torso, neither of these layers will have a parent. So we're not going to be parenting those to anything. In fact, because we're not going to be animating the legs, what we can do is we can lock the leg layer, which is layer 11, uh, sorry, layer uh, 13, and we can make it shy. We're not going to be animating the belt either while we're here. That's why I said 11. So we can also lock layer 11 and make that layer shy. And we save some space in our real estate. Okay. Back forearm, that's layer 14. Remember that that is this segment of the arm here. So layer 14 will be parented to layer 15. Layer 15, which is the upper arm, will be parented to layer 12, which is the torso. Okay, you can rotation, uh, check that upper arm there and just make sure and we're good to go. Back pinky, back middle, and back thumb, that's layers 16, 17, and 18. They will all be parented to layer 22, which is the back hand. Layer 19, the bell, we will parent to layer 21, the back index finger. Layer 20, the bell thingy, the clanger, will be parented to layer 19. Layer 21, which is the back index finger, will be parented to layer 22. And then layer 22, the back hand, will be parented to layer 14, the back forearm. All right. So we'll just do a quick rotation check there that I'm happy with this and that we're good to go. And then we can actually start creating our keyframes. All right. So. If we take a look at the reference footage that's been provided, our character relaxes at the very beginning, breathes a little bit, leans back to ring his bell, and then comes back uh, quite suddenly to his resting position and then continues to chill. So that's what we're going to be recreating. That's what we were recreating in class as well. All right. So we're going to start off by animating layer 12, which is the torso layer. And that's because this is the main trunk of movement. Everything is attached to the torso. So naturally, if the torso moves, everything else is going to move with it. So we'll start off by creating our minor movements here and then expand out as we move towards the extremities, towards the fingers. Okay. So torso, I'll hit R for rotation and create my very first keyframe. It will read zero degrees rotation. I'm going to move out to the one second mark and I am going to then rotate my character back to the left slightly. Now, if you just interact with the uh, number sliders in After Effects, clicking and sliding left and right, you'll see that it uh, increases and decreases numbers uh, by whole values. All right, so it's always 20.0, 100.0, etc. However, if you hold down Command or Control and slide, you will then have access to changing the decimal points. So 13.5, 15.2, etc. Just allowing you to make very minor movements. All right, so just have access to that knowledge. What we're going to do here is tilt our character ever so slightly backwards. And uh, because this is supposed to be a very minor movement, we'll stick with using the value we used in class, which was negative one for the second keyframe. Excuse me. 
my voice is about to break. Um, all right, jumping out to second number two, we're simply going to copy and paste our first keyframe. And what this does is it creates a little back and forth loop, creating the illusion of our character slightly breathing. This might even be a little bit too big if we were trying to be very subtle about it, but I think one will be fine. All right, and this essentially lays out now the foundation for the rest of our animation. I'm going to move up my timeline and uh, grab or up the list in my timeline and grab layer one front upper arm, hit R for rotation and create my first keyframe. This is now the main route for the rest of the arms movement. So again, small movement here is going to ripple outwards. Aligning myself with second number one, I am going to rotate this into the positive values and we'll give it a value of plus one for its second keyframe. Moving to second three, uh, we'll just copy and paste our first keyframe so that it reads zero degrees again. Back to the beginning, front forearm, R for rotation. Click the stopwatch to create our keyframe. First keyframe reads zero degrees rotation. As our character leans back, we want our arm to crook in slightly. So we're going to give it negative one degrees rotation. And then you guessed it, copy paste the first keyframe under second number three. Front hand, let's zoom in so that we can see what's cracking. R for rotation, create our keyframe. I think we'll have our hand curl in slightly as our character breathes. So we'll give that negative one and then zero, copy and paste the first frame. Fingers, the front thumb is going to be rotating um, in, I believe, although I got these confused in class. So let me just see. Yeah. So our thumb is going to rotate in the opposite direction to the other fingers because it is going to be rotating um, right to open and left to close, whereas the others will go in the opposite direction. So our front thumb's keyframe will read zero degrees. Second keyframe will read, I think, a whole one, no, negative one degree. Second keyframe reads negative one. Third keyframe reads zero. Front index, middle and pinky can open those rotation frames together by having them select and hitting R. Create a keyframe there, all of them read zero degrees. These are going to open to positive one degree rotation and then all come back to rest at zero. Okay, cool. So that is the upper arm or the front arm rather now finished. So we can close up those layers there. Our eyes, we're not gonna do anything with that just yet. And our rope and rope two. Hit R for rotation. Let's add some sway to the belt. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start off with a rotation value of one. Create our very first keyframe. As our character leans back, it's going to sway our belt to the right, and we can then have a value of minus one for its second keyframe. And then it can come back to positive one for its third keyframe. This just ensures that there's a little bit of sway that um, over exaggerates slightly the movement that's in the torso. Okay, moving on to the back forearm area. Let's close up the belt and the rope. Leave the torso open as our guide. Starting at the very beginning with our back upper arm. So that's layer 15, hitting R for rotation, creating our first keyframe. On this slight move out, I think we can have the elbow sort of protrude outwards slightly. So we'll have that at minus one. And then third keyframe reads zero. Back to the beginning, layer 14, create our rotation keyframe here. And that is going to be positive one. That opens the arm out towards the right. So we'll have that as positive one there. And then set it to zero for its third keyframe. Okay, back pinky, back middle, and back thumb. Uh, no, not the thumb, sorry, 16 and 17. That's what we're working with next. R for rotation and create some keyframes. 
we'll have them close slightly. So that's going to be moving into the positive values. So they can have second keyframe value of one. And then we can set the third frame to zero again. The back thumb is going to be rotating in the opposite direction. So in order to close it, we'll have it moving into negative values. So its second keyframe will be minus one and its third keyframe will be zero. We'll do the bell and the bell thingy in a moment. Let's finish up the arm. So layer 21, R for rotation. Um, let me be at the start of the timeline before I do that. First keyframe reads zero degrees. Second keyframe will read the same value as the back pinky and back middle. So that'll be positive one. And then third keyframe will read zero. Back hand, back to the beginning of our timeline, create our keyframe that can rotate down slightly. So that'll be a positive value. Second keyframe will read plus one. Third keyframe will read zero. Then we can just quickly run back up to layers 19 and 20, create their keyframes for rotation. And then here, layer 19, our bell can move to the left, which means positive values. So plus one value there. Um, layer 20 will move in the opposite direction. So that will be um, minus one there. And then their third keyframes will be zero and zero. All right. So what we have now done, if I hit Command or Control A to select all my layers and just collapse them, uh, we have now got the basic breathing cycle at the beginning of our animation. Very, very small. You might not even be able to see it in this recording if the playback's not visible. But zoomed up, we see a little bit better. It's looking pretty good. All right. So let me reveal rotation for the torso again, because now we are going to start creating the big movement, which is the actual tinkling of the bell. So right now, what we want our character to do is um, anticipate, or rather not anticipate, sorry, overshoot his movement. So he's going to lean back quite quickly, overshoot his resting point, and then come back to rest a couple of frames later. He's then going to hold that position for a couple of seconds. During those seconds, our character will uh, tinkle his bell, and then he'll come back to the resting start again. All right. So in line with my third keyframe, what I'm going to do is holding down uh, on a MacBook shift and command and hitting the right arrow key to jump uh, 10 frames out to the right. It would be shift and page up or page down on a keyboard. I am going to have my character lean backwards to negative three. All right. So he's overshot the position there. I'm then going to move five frames forward, one, two, three, four, five, and I'll change that position to negative two. So what this essentially does is it gives me the illusion that he has overshot and comes back to rest. All right. So he is now holding this position. Um, I just know by now teaching the lesson that will create our next keyframe at the four second mark. And what we can do here is we're going to copy and paste the uh, previous keyframe, which is negative two degrees to sit directly below the four second mark. And this is where our character is then going to come back to his standing self. All right. So I'm going to jump 10 frames to the right. And what I'm going to do is type in positive one. So he overshoots by one degree, the same amount that he overshot when leaning backwards, counting five frames to the right, one, two, three, four, five. I now type in zero to bring him back to rest. Okay, now this is going to work out slightly differently than it did in class. Uh, we had a couple of extra frames in between here leading up to second five, but that was really just to try and help calling out the position of the keyframes. I think in the tutorial, it should be a little bit easier to just follow from this point. All right, so our character is now back in his resting position. What we're going to do is copy and paste the very first three keyframes here. And what that allows us to do is have that transition. So he leans back, 
leans forward, bumps back into rest, and as he gets back into rest, he then starts relaxing again. All right, and we're just going to now mimic this for the rest of our layers. So moving on to the front upper arm, layer one, let's grab that in line with my third keyframe. We are just going to essentially be using these um, keyframes as markers now. So if you'll just pay attention to what it is I'm aligning myself with on layer 12, you'll know which keyframe I'm in, in, uh, in line with. All right, so creating my fourth keyframe for the front upper arm as my character um, leans backwards. Again, we're going to overshoot. So let's have our arm open out this way. I think we can have it open up to four and then five frames later, we'll change that down to three. Overshoot there. All right, now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to just animate this entire block and do all of the layers first, and then we'll go and copy all the keyframes and finish it out as we move into that final resting point, just so that I don't lose my train of thought as I animate these frames. All right, moving on to layer two, the front forearm, hitting R for rotation to bring that back up in line with my third keyframe. 10 frames out, I'm going to rotate that, and I'm essentially just going to use the same value as the front upper arm, but a negative value, because the elbow is going to cause it to rotate in the opposite direction. So negative four over there, and then five frames later, bring that down to negative three. Play that back, I'm happy with that. All right, front hand, that's layer three, in line with my third keyframe, moving 10 frames out. What this can do here is we're going to open and splay the fingers out a little bit. So I'm going to rotate this in this direction. I think we can make it plus five and then five frames later, we'll make it plus four. Okay, doesn't look like much when you play it back. And the reason is because it's all happening at the same time. You'll see once we stagger these frames out, it looks a lot better as well. Okay. So moving then on to the front thumb, which is layer four, R for rotation, fourth keyframe being made, we'll rotate it out. So we'll make that negative four. Um, and then five frames later, we'll make it negative three. Okay, doing the same thing for the front index, front middle and front pinky, these five uh, sorry, uh, layer five, six, and seven. I can rotate them at the same time because they're moving in the same way. They are going to move into positive values. So they'll have a value of plus four and then five frames later, value of plus three. Okay, the eyes will come back to, we're gonna add some blinks in a little bit. Let's move on to the two ropes. Now these ropes are gonna behave slightly differently as I explained in class. Because they aren't attached to a stiff section of the torso, they're not rigid, they aren't boned in any way. They are going to just flop their momentum out until they have no energy left essentially. So as our character leans back, our belt is going to sway to the uh, left. Okay, so we can animate both nine and 10 at the same time. Let's rotate them into positive values. So let's say plus four. I wanna make sure that I'm in line with my keyframe there. And then one, two, three, four, five. Actually, we're not even gonna count out by five. Sorry, I'm getting myself confused here. Because again, it's not um, the, the bottom of the rope isn't attached to the top of the torso. When the torso moves back, it's not going to really affect that rope. We can get away with just having it sway and uh, dissipate its energy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump 10 frames out and we're going to push them in the opposite direction. So maybe negative four, 10 frames out. We'll then give it positive three. So I'm subtracting a number but I'm swapping it into the positive value so that it rotates in the opposite direction. 10 frames out will give it positive two. 10 frames out will give it negative one. Just wanna make sure, did I not make a mistake there? Uh, positive four, negative four, positive three. Sorry, 
this should be negative 2 and then positive 1. Negative 2, positive 1. And then 10 frames out, we can actually then align ourselves with... Um, I'm just going to count this as the, the second sort of breathing cycle over here. So we can copy and paste our first set of three keyframes in line with where we pasted it on our torso. So that's just before the five second mark. All right. And that will then just allow us to finish out our belt animation. So I'm going to play that back and see. Yeah. And then it moves back into its resting cycle. I actually think that I got the direction of the belt wrong when I did it first. So let me just correct that quickly. If we go back to the second set of keyframes for layers uh, 9 and 10, that should be a positive one. I believe that will then create the illusion. Yeah. And then if we go to our second last set, that will also then be positive one. Okay, sorry about that. I think that's got it right now. Yeah. Okay. Then let's move on to the main course of action. This is our back arm, and this is where pretty much everything is happening right now. Let's just take a sip of water. You guys are killing me. All right. We're going to be animating layer 15 first, bring up R for rotation and align myself with the fourth keyframe on my torso layer. We're going to animate this out. So that is going to be negative four. And then five frames later, we'll read negative three. Okay. We'll go back to the uh, back pinky and the back middle. So that's layer 16 and 17. I'll hit R for rotation. And when we move back into this position, I think, let's just see the motion here, it's opening out. So let's have the fingers move in slightly. So that will then maybe go to positive four for layer 16 and 17, and then positive three. So essentially the same values as the upper arm. Okay, then we have the back thumb. Now the back thumb is going to move in the opposite direction of the uh, middle and pinky. So R for rotation, where it says positive four for layer 16 and 17, we'll type in negative four for layer 18. We can, uh, uh, and then sorry, the next keyframe there, five frames later will be negative three. Then we'll come back to the bell and the bell thing in a moment. Let's just finish up the arms. Back index, we'll hit R for rotation. That's going to be the same values as uh, back pinky and middle. So this will be positive four for its next keyframe and then five frames later, positive three. Back hand, that's layer 22. Its fourth keyframe will read positive four five frames later, positive three. Okay. And then let's not forget layer 14, which is our back forearm. I'm going to hit R for rotation here. As our arm comes out, I want it to extend slightly this way. So we'll give it a rotation value of four for its fourth keyframe, and then three for its fifth keyframe. Coming back down to the bell and bell thingy, hitting R to bring up their rotations. Um, the bell <clears throat> is going to move. Uh, let's make it move in. Um, sorry, let me see which direction would make sense. As it moves up, it would move a little bit to the left. So we can have it read three degrees. Let's make, yeah, three degrees. And five frames later, it can read two degrees. Bell thingy, I am going to animate in the same direction. I think I was making a mistake in class. I apologize for that as well. But we're going to give it um, three for its fourth keyframe and two for its fifth keyframe. All right. 
Now comes the action. Here, our bell is going to be tinkled, and then eventually our character will come back down to rest. So, major motion is going to occur in our back hand, which is layer 22. So what I'll do here is I'm going to jump 10 frames forward, and I'm going to type in a value of positive, how far can I push it? Let's make it eight. Okay, so that value reads plus eight, and that's just so that my bell doesn't disappear behind my sleeve. All right, jumping 10 frames to the right, I'm gonna make that negative eight. Maybe we push it a little bit further, let's make it negative 16. 10 frames ahead, we'll make it positive eight again. And then in 10 frames, we'll have it at negative eight. And then in 10 frames, which is in line with the uh, beginning of our rest cycle, we'll have it zero. We'll essentially just be able to copy and paste the first three keyframes in line here. And when it brings us straight back to our rest cycle. So we ring and we come back to rest. Lacquer. All right, let's make the rest of everything move along with it. So next thing that we'll animate is the back index finger because our bell is attached to this finger. So we need to make sure that we add a little bit of movement here. So I'm in line with its fifth keyframe right now, jumping 10 frames out. We can have it uh, let me just see again. So we're bringing the bell in first. So we'll have the bell just rotate slightly more. We'll add, set that value to four. 10 frames out, that can be negative four. 10 frames out can be positive four. 10 frames out, negative four and 10 frames out, zero. Okay. And we can finish it off by simply copying and pasting our first three keyframes. Let's go to the back th uh, middle and back pinky quickly because those are essentially going to have the exact same keyframes as the back index finger. So what I can actually do is be nice and lazy and I'm going to copy the keyframes from layer 21 back index, command or control C. And then on back pinky, I'm going to hit command V and paste it there. And layer 17, hit command V and paste it there. And we've done it nice and lazy and saved a couple of moments. Okay. Then we'll come down to the thumb. The thumb is going to move in the opposite direction to the, um, I believe, to the finger, to, uh, to the index finger, I mean. So its fourth keyframe should read positive four. 10 frames out will be negative four. Am I getting myself confused? That seems to be working anyway. Okay, so yeah, um, let me just try it in the opposite direction. Sorry guys, I'll be with you in one moment. It's been a long day. Um, yeah, I was right the first time. Okay, so my, uh, let's just realign myself here so I can show you where I am. So I'm in line with my fifth keyframe here, which reads negative three, 10 frames out reads positive four, 10 frames out reads negative four. It's the exact same as the uh, other fingers. So when they say plus four, it'll be plus four. When they say minus four, it'll be minus four. All right, and then I can copy and paste the first three keyframes there. Okay, back forearm. What we're gonna do here is our fifth keyframe currently reads plus three. We're gonna jump 10 frames out and that's just going to be plus two. 10 frames out, it can be plus three. 10 frames out, it can be plus two. 10 frames out, it can be plus three. And then 10 frames out, it's going to be the copy paste of our very first three keyframes. All right, back upper arm, we're gonna have even smaller motion. 
So I'm in line with my fifth keyframe here, it reads negative three. 10 frames out, it's going to read negative 2.5. 10 frames out, negative three. 10 frames out, negative 2.5. 10 frames out, oh, that was negative 25, my bad. Uh, go back there, negative 2.5. 10 frames out, negative three, 10 frames out is going to be the copy and paste of our first three keyframes. All right, so I just wanna play this back and see if I'm happy with it so far. It seems to be doing what we want it to do. Yeah, now it's time to animate the bell and the bell thingy. We're gonna animate them going in the same direction. I think that my mistake was um, the, the offset, so we'll see in a moment but we'll create our keyframes here. And as our hand comes in, they can sway in slightly so that value can read four. 10 frames out, let's make it negative four. Let's make it uh, negative 10 even. We can really exaggerate this a little bit. Um, yeah, 10 frames out, four. So that's positive four, 10 frames out. Oh no, what have I done? Um, sorry, that's positive four, 10 frames out, negative 10, 10 frames out. Copy and paste the very first three keyframes. See how this works out. Yeah, cool. All right, and I believe that we have now done all of our layers. So if I hit Command or Control A to select all of my layers, and I hit U, which will then bring up all my layers, we see that we have not yet finished our upper arm yet, our front arms. So let's do that. All right, I'm gonna hit U to collapse all of these layers. Uh, let's bring up the rotation for the torso as a guide, and let's bring up the rotation for layers one down to seven. Finish this one off. Okay, so for this, this is just a simple matter of copying and pasting a couple of keyframes. Now, what we're going to do is replicate each of these final keyframes right now so that our arm has been holding in this position, nice and still. And I can do this by either copying and pasting each of these individually, or just to bring your attention to the far left of the timeline, uh, diagonally below the eye icon, there is a little empty gray keyframe icon. And if I click on that, what it does is it creates a keyframe with the current value that the layer has. So I can just quickly click on all of these little diamonds here. And I've now created my keyframes ready to go. Jumping 10 frames out, these need to come back to rest, but overshoot it. Right? So they're essentially all going to read at this point, one, Except the front forearm. Sorry, I'm trying to do this all at once. Let me break this down a little bit. Front upper arm, uh, the next keyframe is going to be negative one. And five frames later, it will be zero. We can essentially just copy and paste the first three keyframes there. Moving back down, layer number uh, two, which is our front forearm. Moving 10 frames forward, this is going to read positive one. And then five frames later, copy and paste the first three keyframes, sets it back to zero. Okay, layer number three, front hand, this is going to read minus one. And then five frames later, it can come back to zero. We can copy and paste the very first three keyframes. Okay. Front thumb, this is going to read positive one, and then five frames later, copy paste, first three keyframes. I'm sure you can see the pattern by now. Layers five, six, and seven, they all read plus three, so I'm gonna take them all to minus two, and then five frames later, copy and paste the first three keyframes from each of those layers individually. Oops wrong shortcut 
there we go. And if I play this back, everything now moves when it should. We've got a pretty decent, pretty boring little jingle going on here. All right. So the next thing that we need to do is apply some easing and then we need to stagger out our keyframes. But before we continue, I keep forgetting to go back and tell you how to do the eyes. So layer number eight, we are going to use scale for this layer. So I'm going to hit S for scale. I'll open up layer 12 again, just to have a guide. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to overlap our eye blinks so that every time our character changes direction is when his eyes are closed. So we're going to do this by aligning ourselves with our second keyframe on layer 12. And I'll create my first scale keyframe. I'm going to unlink the two values and I'm going to set it so that the second 100 value instead reads 20. This gives us this nice slit. Then moving three frames to the left, one, two, three, I'll set it back to 100 so that the eye is open. I can copy this frame, one, two, three, one, two, three to the right, paste it, and we now have a little blink animation going on. I'm going to copy those three keys. Oops, don't paste them straight away. So just copy them there. And we're going to have our character blink as he starts moving his hand. So essentially around the three second mark, you can paste a blink there. And then we'll just align it so that he blinks when he comes back to rest um, in line with the third last keyframe on layer 12. So I'm going to paste it there and just align it so that my middle blink keyframe is in line with the torso. If I play this back, it should look somewhat acceptable. Okay, cool. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to select all my layers. So command or control A, I'm going to hit U to bring up all of their keyframes. And I am going to drag and select every single one of them and apply easing by hitting F9 on my keyboard. All right, already playing this back, we might notice that the motion looks a little bit nicer, but you'll see again that everything is happening at the same time. All right, now <clears throat> we would normally go into the graph editor and adjust a couple of things, but to be perfectly honest, the animation's working as it is. I'm really tired. <laughs> I'm sure you guys are tired at this point. Um, it's not going to cost you for not doing it, but if you do go in and fiddle with it, any extra effort will always be appreciated. But again, currently just applying easing to it is working and I'm happy with that. The last thing that I want to do though, is I want to overlap or start um, staggering out these keyframes. All right. So when we think about our staggering, we always um, think about moving from the torso towards the extremities. The closer I am to the torso, the faster the action is going to occur. So things such as the um, upper arms that are attached to the torso would only be moved slightly to the right, whereas the fingers would be moved furthest to the right as that time uh, elongates, as that sort of enters, um, overlap occurs. It spreads out like a chain through the arm to the fingers. So. I'm going to select layers one down to seven, all of their keyframes there, and I'll drag them all to the right by a single frame. I'm then going to deselect layer one and shift everything to the right by one further. Deselect layer two, move the hand and the fingers to the right by one. I might zoom in just so that I can see what I'm doing. Deselect the hand move the fingers all up by one. Um, the fingers might move at a slightly different pace. So let's then deselect the thumb and shift everything else up by one. Deselect the index, shift up by one. Deselect the, uh, yeah, let's just move the middle finger even one further. So the pinky will be the odd one out in that step there. And what we've essentially now done is we've just ensured that nothing in that arm is all occurring at the same time really does help for a nice believable piece of animation. So we are now finished with layers one to seven. I'm going to close those up. Uh, belt ropes, we, these definitely need to have a little bit of overlap. So the first thing that I'm going to do is um, 
I'll shift them up by one as a matter of course, but they do have a little bit of weight to them. So perhaps I move them up one more, and then I'm going to select the keys for layer nine and shift them up by one further, just so that the belt has a little bit of sway and a little bit of overlap going on. I might even shift the keys for layer nine one further. Um, just so we can accentuate a little bit between the two. Yeah, there we go. Okay, then we have layer 14. Okay, so sorry, let's um, close up layer 8, 9, and 10 because we are finished with those. Uh, layer 12 is our guide. Okay, so layers 14 all the way down to 22. All right, uh, we can shift all of them up by one. Then what we're going to do is deselect layer 15, which is the back upper arm, and shift everything down by one. Deselect layer 14 and shift everything down by one. Then I want to deselect the um, back hand, so layer 22, and shift everything up by one. Then I am going to only select layer 16 and 17. Let's work with these two here. I'll shift those up by one as well. But I want some overlap between the two of them. So I'll select the back middle, or let's say the pinky rather. And I'm going to shift that up by two. And that's just so that when we have the little waddle between our fingers here, that uh, there's a little bit of an obvious overlap there. Okay, then we just need to do the bell and the bell thingy. So let's offset the bell thingy by three frames. One, two, three. And I believe that should then result in a good bell jingle. Yeah. Cool. And that is that your animation is finished i'd recommend saving it and uh, render it out and then whoops sorry about that knock my earphone out uh, render it out submit it to the assignment i'll then give you feedback all right you'll then be able to go and apply that feedback and uh, make any final changes before you submit this to the end of term final submissions all right my guys thanks for putting up with me sorry it was such a long one I'll catch you guys in the next class. Ciao.